Hey guys, welcome to the series on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. The playlist with all the videos on Microsoft Defender for Endpoint and Microsoft Defender XTR is in the description box. In this chapter, we will learn what is network protection, why is it required, and how to enable it. So what is network protection in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint? This capability helps protect your devices from internet-based events. Network protection is one of the features of attack surface reduction. So it basically stops bad stuff from getting in like, you know, harmful websites that might trick you into giving away information that is phishing sites or downloading harmful software. It not only works for web browsers, but it also works for other apps as well. It leverages Microsoft Defender smart screen and extends its capability to block HTTPS traffic to potentially harmful domain. If you want to know what is Microsoft Defender Smart Screen, there is a different video. I'm going to link it in the description box. So web protection covers three main features. First one is web threat protection. Second is custom indicators. And the third one is web content filtering. For all of these to work, smart screen must be enabled and network protection must be in block mode. There are different modes in network protection. It should be in block mode for these features to work. We will talk about the different modes in a minute. So custom indicators in the Defender portal, if you scroll down to settings, and then go to endpoints and then scroll down under rules you have indicators let me minimize this you see IP addresses, URLs, and domains. You can add IP addresses, URLs, and domains here, but network protection should be enabled in block mode for this, as well as smart screen should be enabled. And then another feature is web content filtering. If you scroll down under rules only, there is web content filtering as well, and you can add uh, web content filtering policies here. So if I give the name test and then go blocked categories. So web content categories to block, you can mention here like gambling, download sites, peer to peer, child abuse images. All this can be blocked using web content filtering. This is another feature uh, that is covered by network protection. So network protection acts like a shield for your network. That is, it is capable of blocking both URLs, that is website addresses and IP uh, addresses. So it can block URLs from being accessed by certain browsers and standard network connections. So it uses the smart screen feed, that is the database of smart screen, to protect your devices from known malicious URLs. So how smart screen blocks malicious URLs in Microsoft Edge browser, it is it acts in a similar way. So like I mentioned before, you can use network protection to block your own threat intelligent IP and uh, URL addresses from indicators tab. You can also block unsanctioned services or apps from Microsoft Defender for cloud apps using network protection. You can also extend this to web content filtering that is block browser access to websites based on category. It can also identify and block C2 infrastructures used in human operated ransom attacks. C2 infrastructure is command and control attacks. So command and control servers, right? They are like puppet masters for malware infected computers. They are used by cyber criminals to remotely control systems that have been compromised by malicious software. C2 servers can be used to carry out a range of harmful actions, like for example, stealing sensitive data from compromised systems, controlling compromised computers to form a botnet, disrupting legitimate applications and services that is causing chaos and damage to organizations. It can also be used for spreading malware. But the network protection component of MDE can identify such things and also block them. So whenever a user is trying to access a website, there are three chances. The first one is that the URL might have a known good reputation. So in this case, the user is allowed to access that web website and there is no notification presented on the endpoint. So this domain or URL is set to allow. Next thing that can happen is the URL might be of unknown or uncertain reputation. So in this, what happens? The user's access is blocked 
but the user can unblock it. He is given an option to unblock this website. That means that the domain or URL is set to audit. Next option is the URL has a known or malicious reputation. Then the user is prevented from access and this domain or URL is set to block. So either you can get a warning message or a block message. In the warning message, if the URL has unknown or uncertain reputation like this one that we discussed here, then it will give you three options. OK, unblock, and feedback. If you say OK, then the attempt to access that site is blocked. That is, it is ended right there. If you say unblock, then you are given access to that site for 24 hours and then it is blocked again. If you are the user, you can try to access that site again and again you'll be given these options and you can unblock it until the admin blocks this site. And the next option is feedback. Here the user with a link can submit a ticket. So the user is given an option to submit a ticket in an attempt to justify why they want to access this site. Then in the block mode, if the URL has bad or you know malicious reputation, then they are given options with block and feedback. If you say OK, then the connection is ended. If you want to provide a justification why you want to access this site, then you can use the feedback button to create a ticket but there is no unblock option like how we got it in the warning message so if i go back to the defender portal go to indicators in the url and domain if i want to create a new one let me click on these three buttons and then say add item url or domain that i want to block is example.com then the title i'll say test description you can give something that describes why you need this indicator so that the other admins can understand that as well and then it says expires you can set it to never or custom this time is in utc i'm going to say say may 1st and then if you scroll down there is statistics this is an option Option which says that check the statistics to understand the impact of adding this indicator. So you can see what will happen if you add this indicator. Data is from the last 30 days on devices with Windows 10. So if you click on this, it will give you what has happened with example.com, how many people from your organization have tried to access this. Are there any alerts for this? What is the threat intelligence verdict on it? And the domain details like domain name is example.com. It was registered on so and so. It was updated so and so. It expires on this. And there is also contact information. You can go to who is page as well to see more details. So I'm going to close this for now and then hit next. In here, there is this option to select what should happen when this URL or domain is accessed. Either you allow access, audit, warn or block execution. So whenever that URL or domain is accessed, you can either allow the user to access that URL or domain audit it that means if a user visits a malicious or any url or domain you add here here i've added example.com users will not be blocked from accessing that malicious site but an event will be recorded in the windows event log warning is like i said before it will block the access but it will also give you an option to unblock it for the users block execution is users cannot access that malicious ip address domain or url so if if i set this to allow and then go next it's gonna tell me device groups uh, scope all devices in my organization and then i can hit uh, next it's gonna give me a summary of this but if i go back and select audit and go next so it will give you an option to generate the alert whenever that url is accessed you can set the severity of the alert i'm gonna set it as say low and then you can select the category as well i'm gonna say initial access and then just as a note for people who are working on the alert i'm gonna just say testing then i can go next it will tell you device group scope all devices in my organization then a summary but if i go back and set this to warning and then hit next 
it will tell me what is the bypass duration. So if you hover over this, it says how often should users be warned about this indicator. If I click on it, it says every one hour, once a day and once a week. And you can also add an URL here that is user notification custom URL. It is an informative URL to the warning message shown to users. So you can add a URL in the message and then click on next. It's going to again ask you if you want to generate an alert and then hit next. You can again go back and then if you select block execution and set next, it's going to again give you the option to generate an alert and then you can submit it. I'm going to cancel this now. So that is how you create indicators for IP addresses and URLs or domains. Now let's see how to enable network protection using Microsoft Intune. Let me go to Intune my uh, admin center. So the Intune admin center is at intune.microsoft.com. I think before it was at endpoint.microsoft.com, but if you go to endpoint.microsoft.com now, it redirects you to intune.microsoft.com. First, let's see how to enable network protection using Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Baseline, okay? So in the main menu, go to Endpoint Security. In that, go to Security Baselines. In this, select Microsoft Defender for Endpoint Baseline. In this, Create Profile. Click on that. You will be given an option to create the profile name. I'm going to say Network Protection Test. You can provide description as well. And then I'm going to hit next. In the configuration settings, there is attack surface reduction rules. Like I said, network protection is one of the attack surface reduction capabilities. If you scroll down in this, there is enable network protection. If you hover over this, it's going to tell you what is network protection, what happens if you enable this. See, it says network protection protects employees from accessing phishing scams and malicious content on the internet. This includes third party browsers as well. If you set this to audit only, then the users will not be blocked from dangerous domains. However, Windows events will be raised in instead. There'll be a log in the Windows event log. If you set it to not configured, network protection is disabled and the users will not be blocked from any malicious website. So if you click on this, you have options. You can disable it, not configure it, and you can enable it in the audit mode. I'm just going to go and say enable. And then once I enable this uh, enable network protection, tab, I'm going to hit next. It is going to take me to the scope tags. We, you can select the appropriate tag here. And then if you click on next, it's going to ask you, do you want to include all the users? Do you want to add any exclude group? So I would say if you're starting it, test with a few users first, maybe create a device group with just your IT team. And then when you're adding all users, you can exclude some of the groups if you want to. So for now, I've added all users or you can do all devices. And then there is an exclude group option. You can add a group for which the network protection will not be enabled. And then if you click next, it will give you a summary of everything that you just did and you can hit create. This is one of the ways you can also do it by going to endpoint uh, security and then going to antivirus under manage and then hit create policy here. It is asking me to select a platform here. I'm going to go with Windows 10, 11 and Windows Server and then select a profile. In this, I'm going to select Microsoft Defender Antivirus and then say create. And then it is asking me for the profile name. I'm going to say test network protection antivirus policy. Next, in configuration settings, if I click on this down arrow, it's going to give me options. And if I scroll down, there are many options here. There is enable network protection. I can select this and say disabled, that is the default one. Enabled is the block mode and enabled in the audit mode. For web content filtering and the custom indicators to work, you'll have to enable this in block mode, okay? So I'm going to click block mode and then hit next. Again, the scope tags, if you want to add it, I'm not going to select anything here. I'm going to go to the assignments and you can select the group here that you want to apply this policy, okay? That is how you enable network protection from antivirus policy. Now let's see how you can 
do it from configuration profiles. So if I go back to home and then I go to devices. In this, if I scroll down under manage devices, there is configuration. I'll go to that. In this, we have policies. Then I'm going to say create a new policy. It is asking me to select the platform. I'm going to say Windows 10 and later and then profile type, I'm going to select templates. So templates contain groups of settings organized by functionality. So I'll search for endpoint protection. This is the template that I want. So I'm going to select endpoint protection and then hit create. Again, I'm going to give it a name saying test configuration policy for network protection. You can provide a description, then I'm going to select next. In configuration settings, I'm going to go to Microsoft Defender Exploit Guard. In this, you can see network filtering. If you scroll down, network protection, you can select it, enable, audit, or disable, or not configured. Here, I'm going to say enable. That is, I'm enabling network protection in block mode. If you want to do it in audit mode, you can just say audit. For now, I'll select enable. And then if I click on next, it's going to take me to the assignments where I can say if I want to do it for all the users or just add a few groups or just one testing group here. For now, I'm going to add all the users and then there is an option to exclude groups as well. I'm going to click on next now. So this is the applicability rules tab. You can specify how to apply this profile within an assigned group. Like for example, you can say assign this profile only if and the property you can say OS edition is so and so or OS version is so and so. Okay, I'm not going to add this. I'm going to delete it now and then click next and then I can review this. It gives me a summary, summary and create this configuration profile. You can check if network protection is enabled on a local device by using registry editor. So if I go to the start button in the taskbar and type reg edit that is registry editor click on it then here go to edge key local machine in that software and then software go to policies in policies microsoft in microsoft go to windows defender and then policy manager you can either find it here where it says enable network protection is set to zero. Zero means off, one means on or two. That is the audit mode. If this is not present, you can also check under software Microsoft Windows Defender and there will be Windows Defender Exploit Guard. You can check under that as well. And if you are using PowerShell, you can use this command to enable it. That is set MP preference, enable network protection to enable. If you want to disable it, then use the same command. But then instead of dis enable, you will write disable. This is how you disable it. But if you want to enable it in the audit mode, instead of enable, you can just say audit mode as well. And if you are using group policy, this is where you set that. So you'll go to Windows Components, Microsoft Defender Antivirus, Microsoft Defender Exploit Guard and Network Protection. You can also enable this using Microsoft Configuration Manager. So in the Configuration Manager, you go to Assets and Compliance, then to Endpoint Protection and use Windows Defender Exploit Guard. Here you set the properties to configure network protection. And if you want to test if network protection is working fine or not, you can go to this fake malicious domain that is provided by Microsoft Smart Screen Test Ratings 2.net. So if I go to this now, I'm going to get this page saying this is a test page for Smart Screen. But if you enable network protection and go to this page, you will get a connection blocked message. And that's when you know that the network protection is enabled. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you learned about network protection. What is it? Why is it required and how to enable it? Let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or if you want me to make a video on any other feature or tool. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and share our videos. I will see you again soon. Bye bye.